Hello people. So the topic at hand is the fifth metatarsal bone or better to say the fractures that are happening at the fifth metatarsal bone. So first the anatomy of the foot in a fast easy way we have the hind foot. So this would be the hind foot. The hind foot has two bones. This would be the talus and this would be the calcaneus. So these two bones are present in the hind foot. Then we have the midfoot. The midfoot bones. In the midfoot bones we have the navicular bone, then the cu cu cuboid bone and the cuneiform bones. So the cuneiform bones, we have this bone that is actually the medial cuneiform bone, the intermediate and the lateral. Then this upper part is the forefoot. The forefoot has five metatarsal bones from the first second, third, fourth, and of course the fifth, which is our main topic. And then it also has all the phalangeals, so this would be the proximal and the distal, so the thumb has only two, and the other fingers have three, so the proximal, the intermediate, and the distal. And also two little bones, these are the sesamoid bones. The biggest sesamoid bone in our body is actually the patella, but these are small ones at the site of the uh, big thumb. So, our topic is the fifth metatarsal bone. There are fractures happening all over the foot, of course, but some parts of the fifth metatarsal bone are frequently fractured. They have uh, problems in bone, forming bone callus and bone union, so fracture healing problems. And they can be often uh, mistaken, especially in untrained uh, people, for ankle sprains. So ankle sprains often happen here and they are mistaken uh, for a, a fracture in this part of the fifth metatarsal bone. So... A little bit about the fifth metatarsal bone, if we would take and enlarge this bone, so if we would enlarge this bone, we can see that it has a head. And the head has this articulation that is uh, articulating with this phalangeal uh, bone. Then we have this part, so this part would actually be the body or the corpus. The head is also called in Latin the caput. So the corpus of the bone or the diaphysis, these would be the metaphysis of the corpus and this would be the diaphysis. And then we have this part. So this part is called the basis. The basis. And this part is called the tuberosity. So this is the basic layout. The one joint is present on the distal part with the uh, distal fa uh, with the proximal phalanx of the small finger of the foot. And we have two joints at this part. So these two joints, there is this joint. And this joint is actually the cubo-metatarsal joint. So the cuboid bone is uh, articulating with the fifth metatarsal bone. And then we have this, this little joint. This is the articulation between the fourth and the fifth uh, metatarsal bone. So in this region, so in this region of the bone, 
So in this region, we have a limited blood supply. This limited blood supply makes fractures heal very bad. So a high degree of non-union can happen in this part of bone. Now we will analyze what fractures we can have. Uh, so the, not all of them, but uh, the most important ones in this fifth metatarsal bone and in some of the other bones and how actually we uh, proceed uh, in treatment of these fractures. So one possibility is that the distal part of the bone fractures. So this would be a fracture line and we can see that the distal, uh, distal, uh, the distal part is actually, this is a joint. So this is an intraarticular fracture. Intraarticular fractures like this that are minimally displaced. So a minimal, minimal, minimally displaced can be treated non-operatively. But if this fracture site or this fracture is if this is divided more than two millimeters, so if the displacement is more than two millimeters, an operation is considered. Then we have uh, these fractures of the diaphysis, so the fractures of the corpus of the uh, metatarsal bone. Many of these fracture, fractures, especially these, can occur like fractures of uh, the diaphysis of other metatarsal bones can occur and most oftenly occur by direct blows. So a direct blow or a strong twisting force. So these two possible, these two mechanisms if the patient tells you something heavy fell on his foot, of course, you will suspect a fracture. There will be bruising, there will be pain. Uh, so these fractures of the uh, diathesis of the metatarsal bones of, uh, occur like that. The third uh, possibility occurs only in special kinds of people. So like people that are serving in the military or really athlete, uh, elite athletes. So these are uh, stress fractures. These stress fractures occur because there is chronic overload and chronic microtrauma to these diaphyses. These fractures, if they are only present in single uh, diaphysis of, of, of the metatarsal bones, they heal well and most often they are treated uh, non-operatively. If there is displacement, so if this fracture would be, for example, displaced this way, three to four millimeters, or if there would be an angulation about 10 degrees, about 10 degrees, not Celsius, about 10 degrees, so this uh, uh, warrants a reposition, an orthopedic reposition. So you would need to correct this as good as you can and put it then into a cast if it is uh, one broken bone. If we have uh, a case where we have two or more broken, broken bones, so something heavy fell on this man's foot and he broken this bone and then also this bone and this bone. So if there are m many of these uh, broken metatarsal uh, bones, and also, if there is only uh, a break in the diaphysis of the first metatarsal bone, we should uh, analyze if we uh, would do surgery. Because uh, in these cases, so in, when in many uh, bones two to five are broken, or when there is a significant uh, fracture in the first diaphysis of the first metatarsal bone, we can we can have poor uh, foot alignment and 
a poor shape here and if it heals with a poor shape the patient will have chronic pain metatarsalgia in this in these bones so we should analyze these cases for surgery surgery will uh, enable proper foot alignment so that the patient does not have pain after this heals now these are some of the fractures that are happening in the uh, foot but some of the common ones happen at the base of this uh, fifth metatarsal joint and if you are working in emergency in an emergency setting many patients will come and uh, have if they have a injury to the fifth metatarsal it will be uh, most of the time in this region so these are actually the interesting fractures i want to talk about if we analyze this bone we can see that we have the this part of the bone where we have the articulation with the cuboid with the first fifth metatarsal and if we have a fracture in this part of the bone this fracture is called pseudo jones fracture or also dancer's fracture obviously because uh, of the possibility when you dance to get this fracture so uh, pseudo joints pseudo joint jones fractures are as the name says not real or fake <laughs> jones fractures and these fractures actually have good uh, healing potential and if these uh, patients uh, if you see a fracture like this you can put the patient in a short you can treat this with a short leg cast or with a special comfortable shoe for six weeks and the patient can also exercise uh, protected weight bearing so protected weight bearing is enough for these patients so they can walk but they need to protect so this fracture is the pseudo jones fracture and has a relatively good potential good good healing potential the fracture that is important is this one so this fracture that happens in this part of the bone where we have the articulation with the fourth and fifth uh, metatarsal bones or the jones fracture so the jones fracture is an important fracture the jones fracture so the jones fracture is very important because the first element why, why it is important it is often missed so if the injury that is the most common injury of the foot in traumatology is an ankle sprain that is happening somewhere here. So the patient who has an ankle sprain feels the pain somewhere here. And this is most of the time a limiting self-limiting disease. But if the patient has a fracture here, the pain will be somewhere here. And for an untreated eye, this can look similar and it is not good if this fracture is missed so if you have a jones fracture the best way to diagnose it is to palpate this bulge here and it is easy to see uh, if you palpate it and you, there is pain you proceed on doing x-rays of the foot so once you do an x-ray of the foot an ap and the lateral view you can then see this fracture how do you proceed in most so we will now proceed to the treatment of these fractures so in most countries in most european countries as far as i saw uh, and in most most uh, textbooks this fracture is actually uh, if it is not displaced so if you have no non-operative treatment 
treatment is done when the fracture is not displaced. So if there is no, dis no displacement of the fracture and if the fracture is simple and if the anatomy is uh, normal, you can only see this fine fracture line, you can treat it non-operatively. Even then, there is a chance from 15 to 30% for this fracture to have non-union. So this is a high percentage, but uh, even with not operative treatment, you can get an 85% treatment uh, rate. The non-operative treatment is a six weeks, six weeks of under knee leg cast with uh, no weight bearing. So the patient will need uh, also to be treated prophylactically for, throm throm for thrombus formation. After six weeks, so in these six weeks, the physician, the doctor will do control x-rays to see if the fracture is healing and if there is displacement. If displacement is hap happening, then uh, an operation is considered. After six weeks, if a control uh, uh, x-ray is done and if there is no union, a further six weeks of therapy can be applied. And if after this there is still no union, an operation will be uh, needed. So in patients that have a non-union um, uh, Jones fracture, they will, when they step on their foot, feel the pain in this part of the leg. And of course, when you wake up every morning and step on your foot and feel pain and walking the whole day and feel pain, this will ruin your quality, quality of life. This fracture won't kill a patient, but it will ruin his quality of life. There are two possibilities to actually uh, treat this um, fracture. And one possibility is the so-called lag screw. The lag screw is put when into the bone so that the uh, one part is in one part of the cortex of the bone and the other part is at this part, at the medial cortex of the bone. So one is at the lateral and one at the medial part of the cortex of the bone. And it is uh, put into a 90 degree angle with the fracture site. This is also important. And when you tightening this screw, you will achieve intrafragmentary compression. And this heals most of the time well. So this is one technique. But if the fracture line is not suited for this, the, this screw is in, inserted in the tuberosity, this is also called the styloid process, and it is re inserted through that. So if you can't do this properly, there is also the second possibility. The second possibility is the intra medullary, the intramedullary screw. This screw is actually inserted into the medulla of the bone. So the, we have the compact bone, the cortex, and we have the medulla, the spongy bone. So this uh, screw is inserted into the medulla of the bone. And in this technique, it is the diameter of the screw is important. So it needs to be the right size to compact and in in that way achieve intrafragmentary compression. And it is also good that the parts that are behind the fracture and in front of this fracture line are the same length. Uh, treating this um, uh, fracture like this has high rates of success. Also, oper operations, oper operative treatment. is mostly done when the fracture dislocates or when we see that uh, uh, in initially when we see a dislocated fracture so a few millimeters of dislocation uh, or 
if the fracture dislocates in, in our follow-ups, we will do an operation. So this is the first dislocation. The second important uh, element where we do therapy is in elite athletes. So in elite athletes, an operation will enable them to get faster uh, back into the activity. So this is why uh, when you have a patient coming into your office you and complaining about ankle pain, you should always also analyze this little bump and analyze if there is pain over it and control uh, with x-ray if there is a fracture. So you don't miss this important fracture that sometimes or actually frequently in 15 to 30 percent uh, does not heal well. Thank you.